is part 24 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss deleting database records using POST request and showing the client-side JavaScript confirmation dialog box before deleting data. Please watch part 23 before proceeding with this video. At the moment, when we click on this delete link, we issue a GET request and that employee's row will be deleted. In the previous session, we discussed why it's bad to delete data using GET request. In this video, we are going to replace this delete link with this delete button. And once I click on that delete button, we want to display a client-side confirmation dialog box to the user asking if he really wants to delete data. Once he clicks on the OK button, then we'll post the form to the server and as part of the post process, we will delete that employee's row. On the other hand, when I click cancel, we don't want the form to be posted and we don't want to delete employee's data. Let's see how to implement that. At the moment, if you look at the delete action method, which is actually deleting employee's data, it's not decorated either with uh, HTTP GET or HTTP POST attribute. So by default, this action method is going to respond to the GET request and we don't want that to happen. We want to prevent this controller action method from responding to a GET request. And to do that, I'm going to decorate this with HTTP POST attribute. With this change, let's go ahead and run this and navigate to index action. And then once I click on that delete link, you know, we get this error, the resource cannot be found. And that's understandable because we don't have a controller action method with name delete that's going to respond to HTTP GET request. We get that error because we have a delete action method here, but this only responds to an HTTP POST request. Okay, now the second step is to actually replace this delete link with this delete button. So let's flip to the index view. And then within index view, this is the piece of code that's actually rendering these links here, edit details and delete. So instead of details link and detail uh, delete links there, I just want a delete button. So let's actually get rid of these two action links from here. And then I'm going to use an HTML helper begin form. Now, if you're wondering why we need this HTML helper, this helper is going to generate a form tag for us. Now, look at this. When I click this delete uh, button, we want to post this form. So I need a form. And to generate the form tag, I can use this HTML helper begin form. And then this helper has got several overloaded versions. I'm going to use this overloaded version where we can specify the action name that we want to invoke and the controller within which that action is present. And if at all, if that action method has got any parameters, we can pass them there. Okay, so I'm going to specify the action method as delete. And this action method is present within employee controller. And if you look at this delete action, it has got some parameters. So within employee controller, this delete action has got an ID parameter and we need to supply a value for that. And where is that value going to come from? Look at that. I'm using this property of this item object. What is this item object? That is nothing but our model object. So what is our model for this view? Nothing but our employee object. Okay, so this employee object has got ID, which is going to be the ID of the employee. So I'm going to pass that to this delete action method. So I'm just going to copy that and then specify it here. Okay, so within this form tag, we need that button. So I'm going to use that using here. So within this form, we need this button, delete button there. And to get the delete button, I'm going to use this input. Type is equal to, we want that submit button and the value on that submit button is going to be delete. Okay, so with this change, let's go ahead and run this and navigate to employee controller index action and look at that, we get our delete button. Now, if I right click on that and view page source, notice that after the edit link, okay, so after the edit link, we have this delete button. 
okay so input type is equal to submit value is equal to that's our delete button and notice that that delete button is actually present inside this form tag okay and why did we get that form tag that's because we use this HTML helper begin form and one drawback at the moment is that it's not properly aligned okay I want the alignment like this and to fix that I'm going to move this code around a bit so I'm going to take this piece of code I'm going to get rid of that add symbol there and then I'm going to move that code just after the for each loop okay and then I'm going to take this closing bracket and then move it after the closing tag of TR okay and to properly format all this HTML I'm going to select all the HTML by pressing control A and then press control K D so this will properly format it for us okay so with this change let's actually go ahead and run this and let's navigate to employee controller index action look at that now it's properly formatted now at the moment when I click on this delete button we're not going to get this client side confirmation okay let's see uh, if it actually gets deleted so John's record there I click on delete so John's record is deleted but we also want the client side confirmation and to get client side confirmation it's very easy all we need to do is inject uh, some JavaScript onto that button click so I have this input type is equal to submit value is equal to delete already all I need to do is associate this JavaScript code with the on click attribute so on click is equal to we're using the JavaScript confirm function and this confirm function you know returns true or false depending on whether you clicked on OK or console button when I click on OK this function is going to return true so when it returns true on click return true on click is equal to return true it's going to post the form to the server and then whatever that button has to do it will do that okay now on the other hand when I click cancel this function is going to return false okay on click is equal to return false um, so it's not going to post that form to the server and nothing will happen but then look at this here we are also having a message are you sure you want to delete record with ID is equal to one two or three depending on the employee record where you click the delete button so how are we getting the employee ID again by using that item object what is item object nothing but the employee object okay and this employee object has got properties like ID name gender etc so you can either use ID or name depending on what message you want within that client side confirmation box okay so let's go ahead and associate that on click attribute to our button so here I'm going to specify on click so I'm going to use return confirm JavaScript function and we can pass it any message that we want are you sure you want to delete record with ID is equal to whatever is the ID how do I get access to ID I can use this item object right here okay so I'm going to take that item object and then obviously now I have to flip to C sharp mode and to do that I can use that add symbol item dot ID so it's as simple as that if you want name of the employee there simply say name item dot name but let's use item dot ID and let's go ahead and run this now and let's navigate to employee controller index action and let's click on delete look at that are you sure you want to delete record with ID is equal to 3 I click cancel the form is not posted nothing happens on the other hand I click on delete click OK the form will be posted to the server and we are deleting that employees record as part of the post to process on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.